Welcome to my channel. This is Franco Pantaleon. In this video, we will take up moment of inertia using the Morse circle. So let's have a brief review of the parallel access theorem or the transfer formula. So we have here our body and if we want to take if we wanted to take the moment of inertia about this axis AA, then we simply take up this equation. And the moment of inertia with respect to this axis AA is simply equal to the moment of inertia of our object with respect to the axis BB which passes through the centroid plus plus the corresponding a d squared so we we have already previously covered this formula in our previous presentation so anyway what is important is that our parallel axis theorem is simply equal to I equals to the moment of inertia about the centroid plus A D squared. This is also known as our transfer formula. And the polar moment of inertia is simply equal to GO is equals to I Y plus I X. This can be seen here. Now, one another very important concept is the, what we call the radius of gyration of an area. Now, this radius of gyration is very important when it comes to designing columns. So, if, if we need to consider an area with moment of inertia Ix, imagine that the area is concentrated in a thin strip parallel to the x-axis with equivalent Ix. So, our Ix is equals to Kx squared times A. Now, if you wanted to take K to determine K, then we have this equation. And this equation is known as the radius of variation with respect to the x-axis. Now, similarly, if we wanted to take the radius of gyration with respect to the y-axis, then we can have this formula. We have the square root of i y over a. And if we wanted to determine the polar moment of inertia, then we can have this equation. Likewise, our k o is simply equal to this equation. So this is just uh, simple. Uh, review okay next now when we wanted to determine the product of inertia then it is given by this equation now take note that when we take the moment the product of inertia with respect to this x-axis which is the axis of symmetry the product of inertia is zero. So, if we have here, if you notice, we have y, x, y, times the a, in this case positive, because this is a positive value for y. If we are going to consider all of these areas above our x-axis. And, if we take the product of inertia, we have negative x, y, da. If we will add this up, this will be equal to 0, which proves that the uh, product of inertia is 0 when we have an axis of symmetry. Now, the parallel axis theorem for product of inertia is simply this equation. We have... Ix is equals to the uh, Ixy bar plus 
x bar y bar times a. Now, we have here the derivation of some important formulas for determining the principal moments of inertia. So, we'll only focus on this equation here. Now, the equations Ix and Ixy are the parametric equations for a circle. So, the equation for Iy and Ixy lead to the same circle. Therefore, we can have the next figure. Now, this is our Morse circle. Take note, guys, that when we plot the Morse circle, this horizontal line is our plotting for our principal moments of inertia. So, you have here your Ix and Iy. You plot your Ix and Iy along this axis here. And you plot your uh, product of inertia along the y-axis. So, this will be our product moment of inertia and this will be for our principal moment of inertia. This axis here. Now, take note that at points A, this point here, and B, this point here, your our product of inertia is zero. Therefore, we have maximum and minimum principal moments of inertia. So at point A, we have our I maximum and at point B, we have our I minimum. And another important figure here is this figure here. Okay? So, your center corresponds to your I average. And, you'll be able to determine the corresponding angle in our Mohr circle. And in our Mohr circle, we plot our value as 2 theta. Take note that if we have this figure here, if this is our x and y axis, if we bend, if we have moment about the x axis, then it, the, it will correspond to our, if we wanted to determine our uh, principal moment of inertia which is I, I max will have this if we take moment about this direction about our x axis we have our I max and if we wanted to determine our I with respect to the y axis then we have our I mean now, notice here that your Ix, Imax, and Imin, when plotted on your Mohr circle, this corresponds to 180 degrees. However, in our, axi in our axis, it is only 90 degrees, which tells you that when we plot our Mohr circle, the axis of rotation corresponds to 2 theta than our actual theta. Okay? And our I max or I min is simply determined by this equation. We have our I average plus this R here. So we have our I max and our I mean. 
and tan 2 theta is simply equal to this equation which was derived previously now take note that the equation for theta defines two angles 90 degrees apart which corresponds to the principal axis of the area about our point O okay so just for clarity this is y and this is x take note guys this is 90 degrees and when we plot that in our more circle our x and y corresponds to 180 degrees which is twice than the which is twice this principal axis which is only 90 degrees and uh, our i max and i min are the principal moments of inertia about point o okay so we have shown here some sample table wherein the moment of inertia and the radius of gyration is useful. This information would be useful when designing columns or beams. Normally, this concept of moments of inertia is very useful when it comes to steel design and concrete design and others. Okay, so we have here. For the section shown, the moments of inertia with respect to the x and y axis are ix equals to 10.38 and iy equals to 6.97. Determine the orientation of the principal axis of the section about point about O and B, the values of the principal moments of inertia about O. So our solution would be 1. We compute the product of inertia with respect to the x y axis by dividing the section into three rectangles and applying the parallel axis theorem to each. So in this case, we have this corresponding, this figure would be our figure one, rectangle number one, and this would be our rectangle number two, and this would be our rectangle number Three. Okay. So, one, we compute the product of inertia with respect to the x, y axis by dividing the section into three parts. So, this is our rectangle number one, rectangle number two, and this is our rectangle number Again, this is our x and y axis and we have the corresponding information or coordinates for our centroids for the corresponding rectangles. So, we will now determine the product of inertia. So, it would be, it would be advisable that we create a table for solving the product of inertia. So we have rectangle 1, 2, and 3. And the area in terms of square inches. And the distance of the centroid for the figure considered. And finally, 
we now have our product of inertia okay for figure number for rectangle number one the area of this is we have dimensions three inches by one half inch so we have three times one half inch or three times 0.5 is equals to 1.5 Now, for figure number two, this have a total height of, we have four minus one half minus one half, which is three inches. Three inches times one half inch, we have, again, the area is 1.5. And for figure three, rectangle number three, which is similar to this area here, we have area is 1.5. Five. Now, with respect to our uh, the distances for the centroid with respect to our x and y axis, we have for figure 1, which is to the left. So, this is our point of reference set. So, this should be our x distance should be negative 1.25. And the distance, the y distance is positive 1.75 okay for figure number two for rectangle number two so the centroid is located exactly at this point therefore our x bar and y bar is equal to zero Figure number 3, we have distance x equals to positive 1.25 and our y distance is negative since it is below our x-axis. We have the ordinate is negative, negative 1.75. So, we have area 1.5 times x bar times y bar is equals to negative 3.28 now of course the zero here and this is 3.28 okay so our ix y which is simply equal to the summation of x bar y bar a is simply equal to negative 6.56 so we have now our, our i x y the product of inertia is simply equal to negative 6.56 Okay, so we have now determined our product of inertia. So next is, we will determine the orientation of the principal axis and the principal moments of inertia. So we have this corresponding figure here. Now first of all, we will solve our angles using the equation so from the previous equation we have tan 2 theta is simply equal to negative 2 i x y over i x minus i y now we have already determined our i x y and our these values for i x and i y so we have negative 2 times negative 6.56 over i x we have 10.38 
minus 6.97 which give us a value 2 theta is equal to 75.4 degrees and our theta x simply equal to this is this is for theta x for our principal axis and this is rotated through an angle this theta x and we have 37 point seven degrees so this corresponds to this angle now take note that on our more circle we have two angles to determine our principal axis the orientation of our principal axis in our more circle it should correspond to plus 180 degrees so if we are going to add 75.4 plus 180 then we have another angle of r 2 theta y for the orientation of our y prime which is equals to 255.4 degrees and if you wanted to determine r the angle for r y prime is divided by 2 we have 127.7 degrees which is now this angle here with respect to this x axis we have the rotation is now this is rotated our y, y prime now becomes 127 degrees from our horizontal axis and our x prime is rotated at an angle 37.7 degrees for our x axis okay so these are our answers Now, our principal moments of inertia corresponds to our I max and I min. So we have I max, I min, simply equal to, from the equation, we have Ix plus Iy over 2 plus minus the square root of, we have, Ix minus Iy over 2 square plus Ixy square. Since we already have values for our Ix, Iy, Ixy, then substituting these values, we have 10.38 plus 6.97 over 2 plus minus the square root of we have 10.38 minus 6.97 over 2 square plus we have negative 6.56 square so we have our i max this value plus this value simply equal to our 15.45 And our I mean is our I mean. Oops, 
I mean simply equal to this value minus this value is equals to 1.897 these are our answers this corresponds to our principal moments of inertia our moment of inertia about i x prime and our moment of inertia about our i y prime which is now rotated at these angles at an angle of about x x y x prime is now rotated at an angle of 37.7 degrees now take note that we have solved for our uh, orientation of the principal axis as well as the principal moments of inertia using the equation now this time we will solve the same problem using the more circle so we were given the corresponding values ix is simply equal to 10.38 IY is 6.97 and our product of inertia is negative 6.56. So when we plot that on the Mohr circle, we first plot the, these values. So we have, we plot this value here. We have 10.38. Okay. We plot with our axis and we plot the 6.56. 97 so in this case this would be plotted somewhere here and take note that our product of inertia is negative 6.56 so this must be below our principal this axis here so that point should be negative 6.56 when you plot this at corresponding distance of 6.56 97 so this corresponds to coordinate of we have 6.97 and 6.56 so this should be the corresponding coordinate next is we will now plot our circle so we will plot this line here and this should be our center IO and take note that we can determine this value here by simply getting the average of our IX and our IY which is simply equal to we have 10.38 plus 6.97 divided by 2 is simply equal to 8.675 so this this point here corresponds to 8.675 okay so let me connect the points we now have this corresponding triangle this corresponds to our two theta and this corresponds to our x prime it is the new orientation and our y prime is simply equal to this point here and take note that in our original figure the orientation of our y prime with respect to this axis here should be 90 degrees in our more circle 90 times 2 we have 180 degrees now based on this figure this is now our triangle and we have here similar triangle so this corresponds to this side here corresponds to 6.56 and this corresponds to 
seven zero five. So we have this ten point thirty eight minus six point ninety seven divided by two. We have one point seven zero five. Now we can now determine our two theta. So we have from the more circle diagram we have from the triangle we have tan two theta is equal to six point fifty six divided by one point seven zero five. So we have our two theta. 2 theta x prime x prime is simply equal to 75.4 again this have the same value as we have previously solved and our theta x is equal to 37.7 degrees now if we add 180 degrees to determine our orientation for our y prime we have 2 theta y prime plus 180 it's simply equal to 255.4 degrees and our theta y prime should have an angle of 127.7 degrees Notice that we only solve these values here for an angle of orientation using the Morse circuit. Now, we wanted to determine our I max and our I min. So, our I max based on the Morse circle is simply equal to this point here plus the corresponding radius here. And take note, guys, that this side so we have we have 6.56 square plus 1.705 square you take the square root of that so that you'll be able to determine it is simply equal this expression simply equal to 6.778 so our r is simply equal to 6.778 so you have 8.675 plus this whole R here. You have uh, I max equal to 8.675 plus our R, which is simply equal to 8.675 plus we have 6.778. And our IMAX is equal to 15.45. And our I mean is simply equal to this minus this R. Since we already have determined our R. So our IMAX we will plot our IMAX first. Our IMAX is equals to 15.45. And our I mean, this is our I mean, simply equal to 8.675 minus 6.778 and our I mean is equal to 1.897 so this now corresponds to our principal moments of inertia or i max and r i mean take note guys we solve this using the morse circle so 
this is now the orientation of our new axis our x prime is at 37.7 degrees with respect to the horizontal axis and our y prime is oriented at 127.7 degrees with respect to the horizontal axis and our maximum and minimum values are these values if you like the content of this video click like subscribe and please share thank you bye bye